I am David Sharps, and I have a fun story. I have a, a barge that's 94 years old now, and I guess the way I came about this barge is I taught myself to juggle. Of all things, juggling led me to the high seas as a variety entertainer for Carnival Cruise Lines and Sunline Cruises. And after traveling around and around and around with over a hundred cruises, I decided that I wanted to do something different. I got this barge for one dollar shortly after that, put it on the National Register, and uh, even though I had never had any experience with tools, I started under the long undertaking of pumping it out and getting the barge to float. Took two years to float it, and then we began on the superstructure, worked with a bunch of different carpenters on a lot of different projects. And today, we're just about finished our hull. Um, the under part of the barge is in excellent shape, having been out of the water a couple of years ago, and um, getting very close to getting this barge back to its original condition. Uh, this barge is the only surviving example of its kind left afloat. It used to carry goods for the Lehigh Valley Railroad barge across the harbor at a period of time known as the Lighteridge era, and this was a time when railroads were carrying freight across the United States. Ships, probably sailing ships or steam vessels, were bringing goods across the seas. Each railroad company had its own uh, railroad fleet of tugs and barges, and it became known as the Railroad Navy. It wasn't a military navy, but it was a, a navy of commerce. We were at South Street Seaport, and Liberty State Park, and Piermont, and Hoboken, but we never had a firm commitment for a long-term home port, so each year we were out looking for a place to do our programs. It was in 1994 that I met Greg O'Connell, who offered us a spot here in Red Hook uh, for a long-term home, uh, a base for our operations. Uh, Red Hook was a community that embraced us very strongly, Brooklyn itself, embraced us. There wasn't much out here, and we served a great purpose in bringing people here that might not have otherwise come to Red Hook. When Red Hook slowly became gentrified over the course of, oh, maybe 10, 12 years, our purpose for the museum slowly changed. We no longer were looked upon as an entity to bring people to Red Hook, but more an institution that wanted to serve a population that was already here. Uh, now we have um, our scheduled open hours and we're thinking of different ways of uh, positioning ourselves in the community so we're more an integral part of the community. When kids come aboard the barge, it's a moment for them to step back in time. A lot of times they've never been on a boat, they've never felt the feeling of the decks moving beneath their feet. The, sometimes it's the sounds or the smells that uh, are a little bit different than a classroom. Interestingly, we also talk about why it became obsolete and what is obsolescence. So why don't they use this barge? It's certainly capable, it's a float, it could go across the river, it could carry tons and tons and tons. But the reasons that it's no longer uh, being used is the changes and the shifts in transportation and commerce history. And these changes and shifts have led to containerization and our use of trucks and bridges and tunnels and highway systems and gas and oil and all the things that we, you know, struggle with today. And that system of containerization has put this barge out of work. A little by little, I've come to kind of hang my hat on a, a dream that uh, started very humbly in the mud with about 300 tons and uh, through the preservation project that I learned firsthand through the mud I uh, have now become a museum president and a, an authoritarian on barges and old-timer stories on the Lighteridge era and we found a little niche that uh, I think is pretty special.